I'm Vanessa, the girl on a bike, and I am here today as part of the COVID Safe Motorcycle Live Online. And I'm here to talk to the Super Soco CEO, Richard Jordan. So this is part of a series of Ask the Experts with Motorcycle Live. So please do check out the website for more chats like this and lots of things going online, COVID Safe for 2020. So Super Soco. Superzoco is an electric motorcycle brand. They were founded in 2015 and sell bikes in 59 different countries. And if we think about the cost of electricity, you can get bikes that are going to cost less than a pound for 100 miles, which is a no brainer as to why these bikes are increasing in popularity. So today I'm going to be welcoming Richard. Thank you so much Hello. for joining us. Hi, good to be here. So are you happy that we just dive straight in with some questions? We've got a mix of questions and some of them from the fan base online. So thank you to everyone who has submitted a question. Yeah, happy to dive straight in. I thought we'd get a little bit personal straight up and ask you, what was the first electric bike you ever rode? Um, funnily enough, it was it's from the same manufacturer. It's a very old model. Um, it was first produced in 2010. I think I had to go on it about 2012. Um, and it was a, a big clunky one with, we had great range it, and, they, and they still manufacture it. We actually still use um, uh, a newer version of it um, for delivery purposes. But at that point, it was the very start. Um, the, the first few that we had over here, they are still going though. From 2012. Wow. From 2012. That's fantastic. So you say big and clunky. Is this a ridiculously big, heavy battery? It is. It's all about the battery with electric. Yeah. The, the, the bigger the battery, obviously, the greater the range. It's only been quite recently that we've had batteries which are light enough um, to get an acceptable range for the purposes that people want to use the vehicles for um, and be able to take it out of the bike. Yeah. It's always a balance, isn't it? And it's it's incre impressive to think that a bike from 2012 is still going strong because a lot of people's initial, you know, almost fears with electric is the fact that the battery life and, you know, you're going to have to need, buy a new battery in a couple of years' time. So it's really cool to hear, you know, that your your first experience is still going strong. So yeah, what well, fun, funnily enough, that battery is we tested it and 92% um, of its original capacity and it's done, I think it's, it's been in a fleet since 2012, and it's done about uh, 50,000 miles. So it's held up remarkably well. Wow, that's a powerful start. Okay, so that <laughs> probably helped you fall in love with it. But what made you decide to start heading up Super Soaker UK? So, I, well, I've al always been into electric vehicles. I built my first electric vehicle when I was about 12. And ever since then, I went through a legal career. Uh, during which time I met a lot of the manufacturers. I was the uh, the UK's lawyer to the electric vehicle industry for a number of years. And then the opportunity came to start the distribution for Super Soco in the UK. And uh, I'd seen a lot of electric vehicle pioneers go through and I'd helped them raise money. I'd helped them in some cases sell their companies and, uh, and go and live on a boat. And I thought that looks like a lot of fun. So it was around 2015, I started the distribution of what was then um, Vimoto, is now Vimoto Soco, who make the whole range of the Super Soco and actually Emacs bikes. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go straight into that then. What is Super Soco? So Super Soco is an answer to urban mobility. Uh, the idea is that there's no real reason, especially in these times, we should be driving short journeys in a car. Most, most people can do bicycle for very short journeys. Most people will, will use public transport or a car for longer journeys. But we fit in, what Super Soco is, is it fits in and it fills that gap. So if you want to go, if you've got a commute of the average commute, say, is about 9.8 miles, that's well within the capability there and back on a Super Soco. And you're doing it in a way that's green, in a way that's sustainable, and ultimately 
uh, in a way that costs a lot less money over time. We set up Super Soco and we price the Super Soco models in a way that they compete very well with petrol. The idea is to give everybody who who is able to who who wants to move around the city a Super Soco that's appropriate to them. Mm. And when you say the the price and competitive, I suppose you're not really just competing with petrol. You're competing with the cost of a season ticket. And actually, the, yeah. the price point of a Super Soco, gosh, the season tickets are quite pricey. So it, it does look like pretty good value for money for that urban environment. Yeah, that's it. They're only going one way, particularly, yeah. particularly at the moment. That's very true. So what do you think makes Super Soco unique in the world of two wheels? So a lot of that, there are obviously a lot of e-vehicles uh, electric power two wheelers around. In China, you'll find that they manufacture about 12 million vehicles, such vehicles a year. There's a huge market over there. And obviously that is where um, Super Soco is manufactured. Hang um, on, sorry, 12, there are 12 million 12 electric, million. little electric million bikes already. So and we're actually that. quite slow in adoption. That's how many are made every year. Wow. And how many typically do you think are being sold in the UK each year at the moment? Uh, it's about two and a half thousand. We think it'll, it'll be this year. Um, we're over, we're over slow China. adopters then, really. We, the educational journey of that, that gap, because the gap seems quite obvious from what you just said. Yeah. Uh, it's more that in China, they had a real problem with uh, pollution in inner city regions. When you think about um, Shanghai as a city, which is almost three times larger than London, and put two-stroke petrol in there, and you have a massive problem. And so the Chinese did what only the Chinese can do, really, and banned them. And for yeah. that reason, uh, electric has taken off incredibly quickly. Electric two-wheelers have taken off very, very quickly in, in China. And that's and that's where the uh, the best of the technology um, at least at our end of the market for commuting and delivery purposes, that's where it comes from. So if we focus on electric bikes then, what do you think are the, and let's say the three biggest benefits for people you know, thinking about electric? Firstly, it's cost. So when you buy an electric vehicle, you're essentially buying into uh, the future. So if you uh, if you look at the um, low emission zones, they're only getting bigger. The range of vehicles that are going to be caught by those and have to pay a daily fee in order to commute, they're growing. Um, electricity per mile is one tenth the cost of petrol. We price our vehicles so that after an average year's work, so on a commuter on a on a normal commute, that's about five or six thousand miles. After that, they start paying for themselves compared to petrol. So if you look at our newest vehicle, the CPX, that retails at 3699, um, I would say this, but I, th it's, I think it's a better bike than the NMAX or the PCX from Honda and uh, Yamaha. Um, but with 6,000 miles under the belt, that is an extra 600 pounds you would have spent on, on, on petrol as opposed to electricity. So after that, you do your next 600 miles has saved you 6,000 miles rather, has saved you 600 pounds and the next one. So if you look at the average lifetime of these vehicles going up to 30, 40,000 miles, it pays for itself. So that's number one. Yeah. Um, number two is they tend to have relatively few moving parts. The uh, maintenance and servicing regime is a lot less than with petrol. So with our electric motors, for example, we have two moving parts. Um, a, a petrol engine is about 200 moving parts. The more moving parts you have, it's obvious the more is going to break. You also have a lot more oil, a lot more fluids involved, um, and just a lot more complexity involved in petrol engine. So they go wrong, and they go wrong a lot, and quite often they go wrong. They go wrong in an irremedial way. Um, and the third thing is the environment. I've always been passionate about. Um, helping to decarbonize the supply chain. I've always thought that 
a machine which is only 10 to 15 percent reliable is, is not a not an acceptable way to move people around with an electric motor you have about 90 percent um efficiency with a petrol engine you have about 10 to 15 percent the rest is lost as heat so it just seems to me if you want to if you want to help be uh, and be part of the solution to the problem electric is, has to be the way to go i like those answers okay this one might be a uh, quite interesting one to hear your opinion actually so i i often find from people i speak to when it comes to electric that there's like this educational journey people need to go on from being no i love combustion and all the yeah. i don't know i want to ch- bump my chest but i'm not sure why <laughs> what do you think is the hardest part in the, that educational journey to convince people. So we're both bikers, right? Yep. Um, <laughs> uh, you you love petrol. I, I, I st- I've still got my big Kawasaki. Um, I love touring. Um, and, I, you know, like like we, we all love speed, right? Um, and that's that petrol is still in my mind um, the way that we have to, if, if that's what we want, that's petrol is the way that we have to get it at the moment. Um, however, if what we want is utility, so the way the way that um, I try to position the Super Soco in the UK is we need to compete on cost and we need to compete on capability. And there are certain um, use cases where that's the case. So one of them is commuting, and the other one is delivery. So to people who want electric to do everything that petrol can at the moment, they might have to wait a little while. Uh, and there are always going to be skeptics who say, you know, I want I want the noise. Um, I would try, I would say to them, and I shouldn't really be picking up my competitors, but try zero. Uh, try one of the new yeah. SRF um, bikes. Those are those are immense in terms of the acceleration. Um, and you soon forget about the uh, the noise to have the, the, the requirement to have a couple of Akrapoviches on the back. Um, but like I say, we're, we're, fo- we're just focused on moving people around and things around um, in an urban environment. And we're gaining market share because of the fact that for those purposes, electric is already better than petrol. There's no need to buy a petrol 125 or a petrol 50 anymore. And indeed, some of the manufacturers are starting to phase out their petrol 50s because electric is better already. And that actually, if you look at all the different motorcycles that exist, I don't think there are actually many petrol bikes that can do everything anyway, but somehow people yeah, expect electric to be able to do it all. And actually it kind of is horses for courses. And I mean, I'm, I'm sat here in my garage and I've actually got six motorbikes around me, including the little <laughs> Super Soco TC Max, because I love it for, you know, local popping around, around yeah. town. But... The bike sat in front of me, the other side of the camera. I couldn't do the same thing on them at all, e- even if I tried, because it, it really is, they're designed for what they're designed for. I think it's a really good point that these, you know, they fill a really important need and niche in our society. Um, yeah. I, I really like that thought point. So well, I, I mean, I there's, like, there's the, oh. the electric uh, KTMs, for example. They are, again, it's, it's about... Um, fitness for purpose. Those things are incredible. I'm sure. I'm sure you've. I've seen that you've ridden one of those. Um, and it's it's not an enduro bike, but for a trails bike, it's absolutely incredible. And that that's that's yeah. where I get to. It's what what can what can you use um, electric for? What is electric better for already? And that's and that's where I think the electric market is. Mm. Yeah, the, the traction and the acceleration you can get on electric, yeah. you, you just can't, you can't match it really with combustion. So what do you think the weaknesses are for electric? I think it's some people be listening to this thinking, well, that's really obvious. But um, what, what is it from, from your side as far as Super Soco and what Super Soco are doing to try and work on those weaknesses? So num- number one is um, range. Uh, people still have range anxiety. Um, I I run I run out of battery once. You only run out of battery once um, when when you when you really pushed it, and then you literally have to push the thing. Um, once uh, once once you've got used to the bike's capability and the way that the 
um, the way that the battery drains, um, that's that's when you start to use electric to its full potential. Um, the uh, the other one is obviously cost. Uh, there's there's a reason why um, a zero is is twenty thousand pounds. There's a reason why an Energica is forty thousand euros, um, and it, it is mainly because of the battery. Yeah. Um, so if you want more range, and if you want um, very high performance, you have to pay for it in electric at the moment. Remembering in cars, you have four wheels and you can put pretty much whatever you want between four wheels. A Tesla battery weighs over way over a ton. Um, and obviously they're great machines, but you can't get away with using the same battery technology as you would in a Tesla on a motorbike. <laughs> can you imagine Either a one ton motorbike? <laughs> well, exactly. Uh, it just, I, uh, either it won't fit <laughs> or it's going to be way too heavy. So the batteries that are in the electric performance bikes at the moment really are at the top of the game of, um, of uh, traction batteries. And that means they're very, very expensive. So what you can expect to see, and, and this, this, is, this is a weakness because what, what it does is it stops mass adoption of electric at that end of the, uh, of the power curve. But what we can expect is batteries will come down in price. Lithium ion is, is becoming a mature technology. Um, people are pouring billions of dollars into building the gigafactories all over the world. Um, and the batteries are going to come below $100 um, per kilowatt hour. And if that, when that, when that happens, um, then we start to see um, performance vehicles um, at the same or similar cost to petrol. But that's going to take a long time. So if we think about the motorcycle industry as a whole, I think it's probably relatively fair to say that in the hobby end of motorcycling, it is a, a sort of a declining population in some areas um, with, with younger generations not adopting it in quite the same way. Do you think that electric might become a new sort of catalyst entry point for getting, getting a bit more interested in, in being on, on two wheels? Well, I hope so. Uh, so, <laughs> as as you say, the the traditional motor fair answer. Is, uh, it's people people are getting older, um, and the bikes are getting more expensive, and the traditional manufacturers very much very much catering towards that market. I and mean, why wouldn't they? It's where they make all of their margin. Um, what we're hoping is that um, because of the green angle. Um, and because urban mobility is becoming a real thing, people, I think pe people, once they, once people start moving around cities again, they're not, I'm, I'm not sure whether public transport is ever going to get back um, what it's lost in terms of people like being able to go their own way. Um, and we've seen the micro mobility trials um, in various cities. We're, we're looking to get involved in, in some of that with a Super Soco model um, at some point in the near future. Um, and it's it's from that angle that I think that people are going to come into motorcycling. Um, they want to be seen to be green. They want to be able to move around cities freely. And it's that it's that type of commuter. We, and we're going to see lots more ownership models. Sharing is going to be absolutely massive. So we're moving from the sort of grey pound buying their GS 1250s over to the young Generation Z, Generation Z, which I don't know which one it is. Um, they're buying into a concept. They're buying into a lifestyle more than necessarily buying into a piece of technology itself. Okay, next up, we have some questions from some of our social media followers. So I'm going to jump straight into those. So we have Luke from Twitter. So electric bikes seem to be either sub five grand or over 10 grand nothing really in between are there any plans for super soco to you know put something a little bit more high performance middleweight into the range yes we are looking at that um at the moment hopefully we'll have an announcement at some point in the spring 
Um, can't say what it's going to look like at the moment because um, I'll be honest with you, we still don't we still don't know exactly, uh, and I don't have um, the performance figures yet. Um, but it's looking looking like there will be a new addition to our family um, at some point in the spring. That is very very exciting. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I know. So the next question from Anthony on Instagram is probably really similar, but it actually kind of relates to Sid behind me. So yeah. will there be a Super Soco Super Max? Yeah, so we, we have actually we've we have already upgraded the um, TC Max for this for this model year because obviously it was launched in 2019. Um, this model year has uh, 10, 10 uh, kilometers an hour more than the older one. Um, there will be uh, another refresh coming through. Um, Again, don't have all of the specs for it yet, but um, I'm hoping that uh, we will be able to add a little bit on top of that top speed. Okay, cool. So Gearhead, no, Grand Gearhead on Instagram. Acceleration range and top speed. What is the best option for each of those from Super Soco? So for acceleration. Uh, <laughs> It's uh, it's going to be the TC Max pretty much across the board on this. For all of them. Uh, yeah. Yay, I mean, they, win. This is exactly right. So it's our flagship model. So um, we we would expect that to. Uh, it's a true one two five beta. That one is. Um, is it's very closely followed actually by the CPX, which is the new one. Uh, but if if you want a fun ride, then it's the um, as you as you know, it's the TC Max. Perfect. Okay, what about range? Would it still be the TC Max? Um, with one, it, the TC Max obviously only has one battery. Yeah. Um, you can get more range out of the CPX, which is able to carry two batteries. That's a scooter um, form factor, a bit like a NMAX or PCX. Um, they do about 40 miles per battery. And there is a, a dual battery option, which which is on sale now. The um, the other, the TSX and the TC, both do about the same um, 40 miles per battery. They are obviously uh, speed restricted mopeds, though, rather than 125 equivalents. Okay. Uh, Frozuki from Instagram. Sorry if I've said that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think electric range is at a point where it's acceptable for mass market? Well, yes. If you look at the, our, our sales are obviously increasing um, very quickly year on year. Um, if you look at what we are seeking to displace in terms of our model range, with the CPX, we've moved into, um, we have really moved into challenging people in the mass market. So. Um, the top, um, the top selling uh, one two five CCs. Obviously, you've got your um, the the YBR range um, would be a TC Max equivalent. So we already had, um, but that's I think number nine or number ten in sort of the top ten uh, sellers in the UK. Uh, if you look at the, the SH one ten, N Max, PCX, um, they're pretty much the best-selling 125 equivalents, and they're all a scooter form factor, so a step through. Um, the CPX can be all of those and is coming in at a, um, a, a fairly similar price point. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're hoping um, to grab market share from petrol um, very quickly going forwards. Okay. So, given that we're both sat at home in lockdown, hence why we're doing a Skype call for, for Motorcycle Live. It would be a little bit silly not to mention COVID at all as we, we chat. Mm. So obviously we've got lockdowns, public transport scares, you know, people are trying to go for their own personal mobility a lot more. It, it sort of appears that the sale of smaller capacity electric bikes really have increased during the pandemic. Do you, do you think that the situation has somehow put a sort of a fast forward on the adoption of of this sort of effective mode of transport, especially for for electricity. Do you think it's kind of boosted it in a a way that maybe wouldn't have happened in quite such a short period of time? I think 
Uh, lower capacity vehicles um, and solutions for urban mobility have been selling very, very well um, throughout the, the pandemic. Um, our sales have increased, uh, but then again, um, I think that the petrol equivalents to what we're selling have also increased. Um, uh, we, we're, we're taking market share on a, a more or less constant basis now from, from the incumbents. Um, I don't think that COVID really discriminated too much between petrol and electric. Um, I, I'm not sure whether it necessarily accelerated the rate of change. I mean, it accelerated everybody's sales, though. So we sold more, but also the petrol incumbents sold more as well. OK, so just in general, there is more people going on two wheels. Yeah, exactly. OK. We've got a final thought then. So this is this is okay. quite quite a big question. What what would you like to say to anyone who is considering trying electric? Well, I'd go back to the three points um, earlier on. Uh, it's a lot cheaper. Mm. It's more reliable uh, and uh, and easier to maintain. Um, it's a lot less. And, and in that, there's, it's a lot less dirty. There's no oils, there's no, uh, there's nothing to be changed. Um, and it's also uh, good for the environment. We produce long lasting, sustainable solutions to urban mobility. And who wouldn't want to buy into that? Brilliant. Is there anything else you would like to add before we wrap up? Not really, I think it's been, uh, we've probably got through everything, haven't we? Perfect. I would like to add one thing, and that is to everybody who is watching this, if you haven't tried electric, don't mock it till you've tried it. Sound like a <laughs> bum right now, but that's absolutely fine. So thank you so much to Richard, CEO of SuperSuco UK, for joining the Motorcycle Live online for our Ask the Expert chats. I'm Vanessa, the girl on a bike, and I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure you check out all of the other Ask the Expert chats that are going to be available.